I'm super fly. Kitty. 
another plan to heaven. Follow the Lord all 24 7 days. God is who we pray, even though the devil's all up in my face. But he's keeping me safe and make my place. Say prayers to the gates, we're raised without a chance to face the jail. Till they got my soul to do. Heroes, we're just like no mercy for fools. Who knew what we're doing? We're all about a family and how we do. Can I get a witness? Let it unfold. We're not gonna last until we're done.
FM. And welcome everybody once again to a late night cast here at the Overwatch Watchers Bro. Of course, we are in the middle of our April tournament here. We are going to be doing, I believe, the second match. It's supposed to be the second match of our losers bracket for your casting entertainment. I'm gonna be Sir Waltham, and sitting on the other side of the proverbial desk with me gonna be Aries. Oh yeah, I'm excited to be here and can always be able to start this next cast with you. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, after the games that we saw coming out last time between um, both of these teams, both these teams looked pretty good last time. Um, of particular note, I think it was Mach 3 who went almost the entire mile with... Um, the name escapes me right now. Um, but they, they went 2-3 two, two, against their opponent team that is going to be against the Team Horizon. And man... I, I think that after that game, they're definitely going to be looking for kind of a, uh, a comeback here. Um, that is probably not a game they wanted to lose, and they might be looking to take out some of their anger on their opposing team, the Greg Hefley lovers. Oh yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong, Greg Hefley lost Euro 3 in maps, and then Mach 3, like you said, nearly so close, ended up beating Team Horizon, but it was an upset. You know, the 500 SR difference, Mach 3 being up to 500 SR, of course, and being knocked down, that's a... There's multiple ways you can take that game. You can take it, hey, it's fuel, we can practice more, and take your anger out on the next game, like you said. Or you can take it as a, oh, crap, we suck. Yeah, and considering that Mach 3 is still going to be in this tournament for the time being, it's hopefully looking up that they're going to really try to use this as kind of some swing back, try to, try to snap into shape and really... Uh, build their team back up uh, for the folks at home we do have uh, no 
intro interview here. However, we are just waiting on a few more of the players to get ready. The first map we're going to be hopping onto tonight going to be Hollywood, that classic hybrid map. How do you feel about it, Aries? Uh, I feel like it can. I feel like it can be very good, especially like we saw before. I believe it was on Mach Three where there was just a very good Widow play coming out. I don't remember who it was on it, mm -hmm. but there was very good Widow play on the first point of defense, and then obviously carrying on to that second point where they're escorting the payload. It was very good sight lining and just flicks in general, and I'm excited to see what they're able to pull out here and also from Greg Halfley. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Hollywood going to be a, kind of a Widow heavy map should the teams choose to take it. Um, as well, we might see some Bastion coming out. That's a little bit more in vogue now as we see the Baptiste coming out with the Immortality field. Bunker Comp's kind of growing a little bit in strength. Um, but, I mean, you know, whenever you have a new hero, it kind of uh, throws everything a little bit into the ebb and flow of the game. So I think it's still going to be a little bit experimental if we're going to see any of that new stuff come out. Um, and then I'm sure we'll see at some point a, a few old classics in terms of meta compositions. We might see some goats, not necessarily on Hollywood, although I wouldn't be surprised if we did, especially getting towards that third point uh, progress. Oh, yeah. And I just cannot wait to see what's going to happen here. Like you said, that Baptiste, some bunker cops being very popular right now since with that Bastion and then that Baptiste also. So it's going to be interesting to see what they're going to pull out here, maybe go on that little uh, elevator going up and down and you never know what's going to happen yeah and you know anything could be possible here yesterday i believe it was we saw um, one of the teams bring out five dps on this map to start and it was a wacky comp but they were even using a torb so so truly anything can kind of go here um i believe it was off the map uh bringing out a ton of dps compositions uh here uh, but it doesn't look like the teams are necessarily going to go that way. We will be starting off with Mach 3 on the defense here. And I got to be saying that right now off the bat, looking at map progress or uh, map differential so far, Mach 3 looking a little bit better. They do have some maps under their belt, or as Greg Halfley lovers, still going to have to be working to get their first map pickup here tonight. Oh yeah, and of course, Mach 3's maps all were very close. None of them were really a shoe in but it was also against a very good Team Horizon team that I believe could possibly go pretty far in this tournament. Yeah, absolutely. But, focusing on the time being, going to be going ahead and seeing the Bunker Comp come out of Mach 3, as we were talking about a little bit earlier, Zemrit, Shin, and Blue Shift making up the majority of that comp, uh, the bunkeriness of the comp however we're gonna see if they're able to hold up against this uh looks like modified goats car triple tank comp yep and mock through kooky is gonna go on that ash i'm gonna go over top of cafe and it looks like ghl is just gonna take this a little bit of back alley away and was trying to get some poke damage not really able to get it that much into it but it looks like ghl is gonna try to push in here gonna go into that cafe a little bit nice fire strike there and kooky's able to take down butt void a very interesting name <laughs> what's able to get a trade on the blue shift there that's two supports down from or one support from either team down and this bunker comp doing pretty well so far kiddo is and he's gonna get a pin from kiddo onto zemrit and that's that that's that bastion down and ours gonna be able to res blue shift and he's that d mech shin's gonna be taken down very quickly and so is blue shift as well getting melted there what with that bob Blue shift in what with a very nice shot there in the storm. And Art's gonna go mercy on mercy, gonna get I'm trash. And Kuki with a double on that dynamite and what's able to get able to get that AI yeah, Bob. It's gonna be very important for this fight. And they're able to get this point fairly good right now. But Zimrit, as I say that, is able to get two. Very good from him, and he's able to follow up a third, and that's gonna be this push. Dumb, but they do have one tick on the point. Yeah, not a bad push from the Greg Hefley lovers. They really didn't take advantage when they got the uh, the kills onto the Bastion. However, we saw them take so long just to get progress onto the point as well. You think the Ana played by Butt, Vo Butt Void may want to be saving that Sleep Dart for the Bob coming out. We now know Kooky likes to use Bob to stall out. Maybe having that Sleep Dart up will help to really kind of uh, delay the progress or at least the damage that's going to be coming through from the Bob. Oh, yeah. And the Sang's gonna come out from Zimmer's able to get what very quickly, and that's gonna force that res out. And Zimmer's able to find another one onto that Ana on Void. And Stormhorn's able to get Kiddo there. 
And that's going to be this fight. They're just going to back out here. Kick it with a nice dagger there onto McDragon. Yeah, and right now it's still looking fairly dominant from Mach 3. Again, GHL going to be able to walk away a little bit content from this, that they do have some progress onto the point, even if it is just one tick. However, it looks like they're trying a bunch of different rotations, which I always like to see. But the Zemrin on this Bastion might be crucial. Oh, yeah. Especially with that, that barrier and just kills coming out everywhere. It's a 4K right now. And uh, yet again, it's the fight done. And... Stormhorn with that Diva Bomb able to find one, and Zimmer with that, that <laughs> invincibility shield. And Bob's gonna be popped actually very late here. Stormhorn's gonna be demeg from it and possibly gonna go down. Eh, no. Question yeah, on that Bob, it looks like they're just gonna push in with it. Yeah, indeed. And one thing to remember about that uh, the team comp that is being run by Mach 3 right now, they have no shields. So basically, Bob's gonna be able to free fire into the teams without his bullets being stopped at all, aside from maybe the Matrix coming in from Hornet. Don't know if that will be the case moving forward. However, Bob now off the field. Mine's coming out. We'll see how this shakes out. Oh, yeah. And what with the next shot there on the art? That's going to be that Mercy taking out of this composition. Demon Bomb able to find one that's Zemmered on that Tracer if he went over. And Stormer's going to get demeked and melted here onto this point. And taking down Shen on that Hammond's and taking down as well by one. What's able to get another one on the Cookie? This, yeah, is, this is just being interesting right now and just kills coming everywhere. Yeah, you have to GHL. imagine you have to imagine Blue Shift gonna be kind of smacking himself on the forehead in that situation. The immortality field coming out uh, on top of the Zarya grab from Dragonfies, but it's the M I believe it was Zemrit going to be dropping uh, that Hammond uh, going to be <laughs> dropping before the field can actually take effect. So not quite there in time. Some massive kills coming out of Cookie, however. Oh yeah, great shots from him. Like I said, the sight lines here on this escort. Another nice shot there. Yeah, right now we are seeing some dominant DPS play coming out of Cookie right now. Just maintaining those very long sight lines that, especially the first half of Streets Phase in Hollywood, are really powerful and really, uh, really oppressive if you have a Widowmaker who is up to snuff in this situation. It's really going to be on to GH lovers, Greg Hefley lovers, to play behind Kinnaman's shield if they don't want to take those headshots. Oh yeah. And a nice Ooh. opening pick there from Cookie again. And that's going to force him to go back and... Horn's just gonna try to dive in here a little bit. He's gonna fall back immediately. They're gonna be able to res void. See how this goes for right now. Cookie does have walls right now. Yet again, I said this last cast, but that I, when I say that, I do not mean actual installed wall hacks. I mean the ultimate. <laughs> Indeed, going to be able to see the positioning of the team as soon as they choose to pop it. Looking like they're holding off for the time being. One thing of note here, Greg Hathley Lover is not running um, any burst or uh, AoE healing. So they're not running a Lucio, they're not running a Brig. May want to run Lucio for the speed boost considering how proactive this Widowmaker is being and getting these kills really helped to clear those lines of sight quicker. But maybe the Ana Mercy will work out for him. Oh yeah. Possibly an Eric. Like they said, 60 seconds remaining here. Stormart, gonna pop that Diva Bomb. Able to get one, and that's Kiddo. That's gonna be that. Ryan gonna be popped out, and that's most likely gonna be this fight yet again. Shin's gonna pop that Primal Rage. Able to get one on that. What? And Void's gonna go down as well on that Ana. And probably just gonna back out straight away from that. And great fighting so far from them. Just be able to stop these fights very early. Possibly you wanna drag that fight out, maybe to get some time. But I'll say, don't want them to get ultimate from it. Yeah, absolutely, and Shin doing the best to kind of get really aggressive with that Primal Rage, getting out before it expires, uh, just to not feed, you know, that extra Winston HP. Uh, man, Cookie's still looking dominant here, and this is tough for GHL right now. Oh yeah, very... Cookie again! That Diva Mom's able to get Zemrud on that, on that Genjago. And, like, a Cookie again, he's just so dominant and that's most likely going to be this first half yeah just going to be nate stalling out on the cart for a little bit maybe the valking mercy played by i'm trash going to be able to come back not really going to buy that much time bro and yeah, no not really here's a transcendence and just the rhine on the point overtime taking away oh, no, missed shot from there from cookie and then never mind he, he made up for it yeah they, they they did what they could uh, Storm Hornet really eating the grab of Dragon Fies, just kind of removing yet another variable that may have had some some small chance of having some massive potential. 
with that grav. But uh, overall, GHL at least getting through the first point, getting through uh, at least the very beginning sections of Hollywood. It's not going to be impossible for Mach 3 to break this, however. And as a reminder, folks, we do have the MVP poll live in the Twitch chat. You see anybody who's popping off, probably wait a few games, but after a few games, tell us who you think is the best player so far tonight coming out of these two teams, and we'll be sure to announce it at the end of the broadcast. Oh, yeah, maybe even possibly interview him. You never know. But very, I'd say that was a very dominant performance over from Mach 3 besides one push on that first point. It's very dominant cookie showing off really on that Widowmaker and then just very good uh, tank play honestly coming out from Mach 3. Just looked very well from them. Yeah, you definitely have to agree. It's going to be very tough for this uh, defense to uh, to come through here for the GHL, especially if they get that first point capture. But it looks like they're going to be running a similar composition to what we saw Mach 3 roll out with the Bastion Arissa composition. However, instead of the Baptiste, we're going to be seeing the Ana Mercy. So the Ana coming out, uh, not going to be um, allowing for that immortality field to be thrown down, but allowing for some healing prevention on the opposing team. But if they're running quad, quad DPS, which it looks like they might on the side of Mach 3, might be a bit touchy. Yeah. Mach 3 going to be, of course, Cookie's going to be on that Tracer, see if we can get some good poke damage coming in. My ultimate is charging. They're just going to wait a little bit here Valkyrie for Zimmer to get some info. Most likely yeah. going to notice that they're going to have that Bastion and, excuse me, that Orisa over in that bunker combo on top of the cafe. They're going to be able to burn that shield down pretty fast, and what's able to get Stormhorn in there? That's a good pick there onto that Farah. Yeah, absolutely. If you take out the Fara, you know the res is going to go out onto it, especially that Mercy going to be getting the most value there. And oh my goodness, what? Please stop. Oh, and Dragon's also able to get Storm Hornet there. And Zemmert's not able to find really anything on... Or not Zemmert, sorry. Cookie, not able to find anything. What's going to be able to shut him down very early into that one? And that's going to be this fight. Don GHL with a nice hold there and some very nice kills coming out from them from what... Yeah, you have to like it so far, GHL. Looking uh, pretty comfortable here so far. Uh, not a whole lot of ults built up for either team, but we're going to see the comp switch up. Shin, Art, Storm Hornet all going to be switching. Uh, and the rest of the members will be remaining the same. An interesting wraparound coming through. We'll see if it pays off for the attacking team. Oh, yeah. Man. Zimmert's going to get very low here, and Cookie's also going to get very low. The healing for them right now. We're on Mach 3, and Lucy's just really playing kind of this aggressive or not really aggressive but the dps on her really right now and he's gonna take a little bit of damage for and he might die no he gets very close to it but not really gonna go over that's gonna be that bob gonna be popped out cookie's gonna get traded out and art's gonna be able to take down knight and tracks is gonna go down on that on a trade just coming in flying everywhere for right now from r3 and jhl and that that's a very nice nade over from blue shift the healing's coming in right now for them and storm yeah. getting very low and Ooh, yeah that was oh, storm hornet that was very close. It was MC Dragonflies as well as Kidman kind of working together to maintain this point. You think they may have wanted to use their ultimates beforehand, knowing that this point was going to drop. They're likely to switch off that Bastion and Arisa anyway. I'd be kind of surprised if they didn't. Um, but as we see them rolling out, it looks like they're going to keep with it. That's a risky play to go with here on Streets phase. But they're maybe just looking to invest those ultimates and kind of get out and see what uh, what they can milk out of the situation. Oh, yeah. Did you see that stagger on the night? Yeah, luckily the uh, Mercy able to get the res from Butt Void. Or Butt Void able to get the Huge res. Huge hack! And oh! Massive combo. Oh, Storm Hornet! Oh my god. Nighty, night, night. And yeah, that's gonna that be was, it. GG. That was absolutely the nail in the coffin. Some fundamental Sombra Diva combo. You like to see it. Of course, when the Sombra pops that EMP rest of the defensive team whoever gets caught in it that is going to be unable to avoid that diva bomb it's kind of a recipe for disaster if you're on the opposing team but it seems pretty effective and it's actually going to be our play of the match here but i mean you know we did hear the ults come out from dragon Fies and kiddoman right before that bomb went off so we could tell that they were going for that uh that kind of ultimate uh, kind of dump as it were as it is but the tough thing is when you're at that point once you've dumped your ultimates you're still with those less than optimal characters 
because a Bastion and Arissa can't really set up anywhere reliably on Streets phase. So, so it's one of those things where, is that really the best call? You might have to just maybe consider switching off. Yeah, maybe going on that Widowmaker instead of that Bastion there. But, and here we're going to go on the pick and bans right now. And it looks like they're going to ban Junker Town. Very yeah, interesting band. pick. Yeah, that ban going to be coming out from the side of Mach 3. Uh, perhaps not feeling too comfortable with that. Uh, both teams we saw did run Bastion, but the defense with that Bastion fell for both sides. So maybe Mach 3 looking to play uh, something that's not as Bastion based. We know that the pirate ship can be very popular on Junker Town. And for the uh, map choice, looks like Greg Hefley Lover is going to be picking Li Zhang Tower. I like it. I like this pick, although I think that's all of the King of the Hill maps we have this season are pretty, pretty good looking in my opinion. Uh, but I'm, I'm curious to see how these teams are going to play. I imagine Mach 3 uh, might run a little bit more quad DPS. They were toying around with it on Hollywood. I think it's, uh, it's, it's foreseeable at the very least. Oh yeah. I love seeing these King of the Hill maps because they usually go very tight. Dip not even really depending on the map score, if it's a 3-0 or 0-3 or whatnot. It's always usually a close King of the Hill. Like, I don't know what it is with King of the Hill, but it's typically close. And Mach 3 actually barely lost on King of the Hill. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, Li Zhang Tower. We have a lot of potential from the different map styles coming out. Um, we do have the Interior Command Center, very dominantly run by Mei uh, in substitution for that 3-3 composition. As well, we do have the Gardens that can have a lot of aerial or long sight lines. You know, maybe somebody like Kuki can really capitalize on the Widow, especially if GHL. Uh, Greg Hefley lovers choose to go on to that Farah. Overall, I think you're just going to have to wait and see what the submap is, and I'm sure the compositions will shake out from there. Oh, yeah. And uh, Stormhorn on the side of Mach 3 are going to save Sombra, and what on the side of GHL are going to ban D.Va. Very interesting choice there. Maybe not willing to face Stormhorn on that D.Va. He was pretty dominant last last map, but we'll see here. Yeah, and you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put on my my crazy speculation hat here, if I okay, may. Okay, your hats out. Yeah, I'm gonna say that the Diva ban coming out because one of the teams, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the teams going to be prepping for some heavy Farah play, and they don't want that Farah to get hard countered by Diva. Um, that being said, I think it's kind of a bold pick coming out from GHL, knowing that Kuki can still be on that Widowmaker. Some very powerful sightlines should they choose to take it, but maybe not. And it looks like Storm Hornets, in fact, got to be taking advantage if these compositions we're looking at at the start are anything to go off of. Uh, I don't know. There's a there's a Torbjorn. Uh, I don't really <laughs> trust that right now. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I don't trust the Torbjorn at all, but Storm Hornet and Art playing on this pharmacy combo, I tend to kind of put a little bit of faith into. Um, again, Farah's not exactly the troll or debate pick that you see coming out in this situation. What? Um, I think it'd be very curious, and it looks like, yeah, they're going to roll out of the spawn with it. Yep, and here we go. There's going to be one pharmacy coming out over on the side of Mach 3, which is not the team that banned D.Va, by the way, so maybe it was a fake. I don't know. Your tenfold cap may not have been that great, but, you know. Mm. It may have been more like an aluminum cap or something like that, but we are going to see the battle shaking out right now. Again, the quad DPS is indeed coming out from the side of Mach 3, as anticipated the hack going on to leave Lucio. We're going to see how the battle shakes out from there on. And a very nice early pick there from Zemrin onto Knight. That can very much shake out this fight and very nice shot there from Watt and Stormheart's able to get a kill onto Watt on that trade and Stormheart's also able to find another one here and so is Blue Shift and uh, Rez is going to come out onto Kuki once it was safe for him to get there and then it's just going to cause a fallback from McDragon. He's actually going to get picked off by Art. That's Art's second kill on the Mercy. Just thought I'd point that out. <laughs> yeah, that Mercy looking a little bit more lethal than they might be attached to the Farah. However, this is an interesting kind of uh, composition we're seeing come out, out from the Greg Hefley lovers here. Uh, it's again looking like a pseudo 3-3 with a McCree sub in instead of the D.Va. Um, good against the Farah, but maybe not good enough. It's going to have to really tighten up in here, I think. Oh, and here comes that barrage, able to find one, that's just about it for it. Zimmer's gonna get traded out, and this is gonna be an advantage over to GHL right now. The is gonna come out tonight, but to find anything, just gonna force him out over to the sight line. Just no more, it's gonna go down finally to that Zarya of Dragon. Dragon, maybe got it from the Chinese, uh, 
or Asian, I, I don't know, like Walmart or not Walmart, McDonald's, you know. Always some potential there. However, <laughs> these mines gonna be coming through big for Shin. Uh, not necessarily setting up any kills themselves, but really kind of doing some zoning, help making those rotations really difficult for GHL. Oh yeah, I mean, the kills just gonna come in, and this fight's gonna be actually thrown out right now. Shin's just on that Hammond, gonna be taking constant damage. Finally gonna be taken out there, and triple barrage coming in from Storm Hornet. The Hornet has stung right now. And <laughs> what's able to shut down blue shift there? Get to stop a little bit of that momentum, but Stormhorn is still alive. Zimmer's able to find one. And that's just, he's able to find actually another one. Yeah, and, and this is kind of a dangerous position for the Greg Hefton lovers. This is kind of self stagger territory. Uh, we can see that a lot of members kid him in what I believe Butt Void as well, kind of going in after the fight was lost, or at least. Uh, kind of stuck in transition when the fight started to become lost. And that's a tough spot to be. Do you pull back and have to really rush to get to this last push or not? It looks like that's what they're gonna have to do here. Stormhorn getting two off the back. Yeah. And there's another one from Cookie there. And this is very much a favorite of Mach 3. And there's another, another triple from Storm Hornet. Yeah, Storm Hornet has been lethal with these rocket barrages. You think that what's starting to look up a little bit more, just keeping eyes into the skies as well. Uh, but it feels like Storm Hornets had one of those barrages up every fight. I believe for the last three, we saw a rocket barrage, or at least of the last four, we saw three rocket barrages come out. And that was just really speaking to the amount of ult charge that that one DPS player was enable to build up. Oh, yeah. And you gotta, if you're GHL, you're questioning why you banned the D.Va right now. But... They're going to go over to the pharmacy. Actually, what's going to go over onto the Farah and Void, of course, is going to be on that Macy. So see how this shakes out. They're going to be on that Lucio for night and see how that works out on this garden. Not garden, sorry. <laughs> night market indeed. However, again, we are seeing uh, <laughs> a pseudo 3-3 uh, or goats comp, but uh, instead of, you know, the uh, Zen... Moira or Anna, we're going to be seeing the Mercy come out with Farah. So a little bit different triple support. Stormhorn are going to be getting picked up, and that's going to be our foray into this fight. Oh, yeah. And this trade's going to come in right now, but it's definitely favoring Mark 3. Boy, going to go down. That's that Mercy, which is huge right now when they're running this pharmacy. What's going to try to duel Hornets? It's actually going to work out pretty well, but this Mercy is just. Art is just badgering him right now. Yeah, but he really get the kill. And Wow, that's happening. Blue Ship's actually going to go down to that Brigitte, and Art's finally going to be taken down. Probably should have been taken down earlier in that fight, but, you know, GHL going to take this first little bit in these first ticks. Indeed, and looking forward, it is going to be just on Trash with that Rally Storm Hornet, looking like they're switching onto the Ash, really trying to deal with what, <laughs> what going to be getting the upper hand. Yeah, I don't think that really worked too well. <laughs> Indeed, so far. It didn't seem to, and in fact, we're going to see the swap back from Storm Hornet. A nice pulse bomb just to open up this fight by Cookie. This is yeah, it doesn't look like they're going to dive in from it, but... No, nice pulse bomb, though. They're going to have to use that res, which may have been the point of it. Never know, but... Yeah, getting that res out is going to be basically enabling a 30-second nice cooldown. He nice EMP there. This yeah, could be massive. huge from it. They're just able to get one, another one. That's going to be definitely is opening into the fight, but there's going to be trades coming out, but Void's going to go down. That's going to be a very, very nice point to this fight. It's going to be a 4-3 advantage over to Mach 3. Yeah, and still, props to the GHL right now. They basically traded even, even despite being EMP'd without a lot of their major abilities or shielding. So some real props going in, and it looks like they're going to still be able to hold for a little bit here. Looks like a missed pulse bomb from Kuki there. And Barrage coming in again. Stormhorn able to get one there. Cookie's finally going to get shut down. See if Mark 3 can actually get this point right now. There's... They're doing well right now. And they're finally able to get Dragon there. They're going to capture this one. It's 90% finally flipping over to Mach 3. Yeah, definitely going to be looking favorable for the GHL. They're going to be very content. We're getting close to one fight territory for them. All they need to do is flip it, and it is going to be a very, very good game on their side of the field. 
However, now in possession is Mach 3. Going to be on this Hammond, played by Shin. I'm really liking this. Uh, this is kind of typical of what we see uh, DPS heavy comps with that Hammond. It's gonna be brought very low as the fight breaks out. Stormers actually get a very early pick onto that Mercy and Void, and that, that's gonna be huge for this fight. Kuga's able to get trash, and Dragon's also gonna go down. That's gonna be that Earth Shadow, not kind of wasted here. Due to those picks. And that's going to be this fight very much won by Mach 3 and their great team play and the picks coming in early for them, which has been a huge, huge point of content right now for Mach 3, either getting those opening kills or getting open kills. Yeah, and I think that Storm Hornet really having that off angle where they, uh, GHL weren't expecting them to be behind the team because they were actually coming in from the open side uh, of GHL spawn. They just really weren't expecting that, so there, there was no shielding back there. And once two rockets land onto the soft, squishy supports, they're pretty much done for. Oh yeah, and speaking of, they're just getting bombarded right now from Stormhunter. Shin's actually going to be taken down to half HP, and here comes that high noon. He's going to be taken down very quickly, not even, not even able to get his shots off. And here comes that barrage, and that's going to be huge. There's one. Here comes another high noon. Just uh, going to take a little tiny dip off the map. Yeah, maybe uh, the High Noon coming out from Zemret looking to kind of just uh, space out a little bit, maybe not necessarily expecting the entirety of GHL to go ahead and just jump off the cliff, but that will be the result. However, now both McCree's going to be pretty uh, short on ultimates here. We're going to be seeing the beat drop as we see the push forward from GHL. Both beats are going to be dropped here as well as a rally. McGiant's actually going to get very low. Final kill there, and there's gonna be a trade over on Storm, which is a huge kill because how much he's done so far. And Zimmer's also able to find another one with on Knight, and Shin's also able to get trash, and that's gonna be a huge advantage over to Mach 3. And it's maybe the last fight of the map. Mach 3 is looking beautiful right now. Yeah. And there's Ooh. a one from what, and then it's just that Mercy left, but Void's not able to do anything. He's gonna fall into the Void of Death for this map, and Mach 3 is gonna win. They're gonna go up to nothing into this series. Yeah, it will just be 2-0, as mentioned, in favor of Mach 3, meaning Greg Heffley Lover is going to be onto the ropes here. You don't like to see that as much. And overall, I think Storm Hornet performing really well on this far. I believe we saw them on Diva prior, but aerial characters, characters that really can get that height, seem to be a favorite of this uh, player here. Overall, I think that uh, that far really kind of enabled uh, just the distraction, or not even the distraction, but uh, enabled the, uh, the the multi-pronged attack that could really be enabled onto GHL. As we saw so many times, uh, Storm Hornet on that far, able to pick or poke at different angles, really kind of distressed the team, and uh, caused them to take a lot of damage that they may not have taken otherwise. Oh yeah, and uh, like I said, there was either the opening kills were really determining the fight. Because it was end up being like four to three advantage to Mach three or GHL, and whichever team had that four on three, they're most likely gonna win it unless a huge barrage comes out from Storm Hornet or a few drops or Earth Shatter or something like that. Then it didn't really happen that much. Maybe once or twice during that map, and his opening kills from Storm Hornet really just killed GHL in that map. Yeah, and now we will be waiting on Mach three to be banning the next map as we look forward. GHL going to be getting the pick of which map they want to run. Given that we did just run a King of the Hill map we're not, or a control point map, we're not going to be seeing another one of those. However, we still do have amongst the many in our pool, Gibraltar, Hanamura, and Eichenwald, as well as Horizon Lunar Colony. Most teams choose to ban that, so I kind of I kind of forget about that one. But this time it's actually looking like Hanamura going to be the map that gets banned and it's looking like ghl's gonna pick up gibraltar as their map of choice moving forward Let's see how this one shakes out and never know maybe ghl is gonna finally be able to pick up a map here yet again they have not picked up a map map so far this tournament but they have fought pretty well and pretty valiantly to see if they can finally get one here it is their map choice <laughs> yes um and you know i don't think i've seen <clears throat> i don't think i've witnessed at least too many games of gibraltar this tournament so far uh it's been one that's kind of uh fallen out of the rotation a little bit 
but I'm, I'm really looking forward to it because that does mean that we're going to get to see a map that is a little bit more favorable towards that Winston Diva composition as opposed to the ground and pound style map that we're going to be seeing here. Of course, we did see this map in the Mach 3 Team Horizon uh, matchup here, but that being said, I'm not sure how it's going to shake out for either of these teams moving forward. The ban and save is going to be going on to one sniper each. The save going on to Widow. Hanzo going to be the sniper that gets banned. Not sure if we would have been seeing a lot of him anyway, um, but perhaps trying to prevent that Zarya Dragon Ball combo. Uh, not necessarily a bad pick, just not the most optimal, I would say, for Gibraltar. Yeah, probably not the most. Especially with that first choke point coming up. It can be very deadly if you get that. You know, that uh, Zarya, and then that Dragon it can be very deadly, especially if you're getting held very hard, and you're able to get that, they're clumped up, and then you're able to push through and able to get that first point, probably possibly able to get a snowball effect going, and also they can work for the defense as well. But, never know. Yeah, indeed. You it, And that's, that's kind of the phrase I like to go into each one of these maps with. You never know, you know, if one team's just going to start popping off massively, or if one team's going to just start basically massively throwing on their end. Um, you never know how it's going to go. But moving forward, we do know that there will be a side swap. It's going to be, I believe, GHL on the defense to start. They're going to be in the blue. Mach 3, on the other hand, going to be in the red. They're going to be starting off on the attack here. Make sure you don't forget that at home, folks. I know that I was almost certainly bound to if I hadn't reminded myself. Oh, thank you for reminding me. I definitely did not look at that. That was... Whew, you're a lifesaver. <laughs> Us casters have to watch right. out for each other. And it does look like the team names are going to be correct. So again, GHL going to be on that blue. Uh, Mach 3 on the right in red. And it's, it's looking like I, I was talking about a little bit earlier... Uh, Mach 3 still in spawn, but looking like they're preferring those dive tanks. Going to be three of them, however. Uh, not just the usual two Winston Diva that we see. Uh, Kuki, to almost no surprise, going to be on that Widow. I think that's a fairly solid pick. Widow kind of gets more and more powerful as you go through uh, Gibraltar with the proper positioning. So I kind of like it. I think we'll be seeing a lot of that throughout this map from the offense. Yeah. And here we go, getting started on Gibraltar, possibly the last map of this series. GHL trying to hang on in this tournament and see what they do. Mach 3 going to come out, with you said, like you said, with those dive tanks. That Winston, that Diva Stormhorn, of course, playing that Diva and Shin on that Winston. Cook is also on that Woodmaker, see what he can do here. And there's going to be coming into this dive. Shin's going to be taking down to half HP. Dragon's going to be very low, and so is Knight. Damage going to come out very well over here from Mach 3, and they're just going to kind of dive in, not really dive in as well. Cook's able to get trash, but he's going to get rise very quickly here. And Kidoman is also going to be taken out, taken down on that Winston. There's not going to be res for that one. Horn's able to find one of that first buzz, and so is Dra Dragon's also going to go down. That may be this first point just taken right here and there. Yeah, what on, everywhere. what on this Widow? Not necessarily looking as strong as their counterpart in Cookie. Not able to find a whole lot, but that being said, Kidaman and Nate doing, uh, not necessarily providing the pressure that they need to on the Cookie as well. There's a lot you have to focus in this kind of map, especially when the presence of Dive is kind of eternal. You always have to be wary of it. Um, but that Widow can, as we talked about, have some massive value if you let her have that rain, and I think that they're going to have to keep an eye on that. Zim Zemrit's doing work right now. They're able to get a double there. And Kukusi is also able to get a very nice early pick there on Devoid. And they may be able to take this second point very easily just out of early picks and staggers. Yeah, the stagger spawn going to be a little bit brutal for the Greg Hefley lovers. The Infrasight's coming out, meaning that the positioning will be known as well as the timing of that initiation. Nanoblade coming out. Zemrit's able to find two there. Able to find a third. Zimrit! Shin's also gonna add on to it, and Zimrit's able to get a fourth. By the way, it's not in Fertites, it's Wall Hacks. We all know this. It is Wall Hacks. It is Wall Hacks. Come on. Come on. Bringing this into an NA production. Come on. <laughs> that being said, another few stagger spawns here coming out from Butt Void and I'm Trash. Going to be a little rough for the Greg Hefley lovers. Not necessarily sure if that was a planned on the side of Mach 3. Definitely going to be working in their favor, however. Area. And here comes the Smoke to get a dime out. What's able to get a nice shot there on a Zemrit on like Genji? 
gonna do here. This Widow Shots and whoo, Cookie's able to win that one. Very nice shot there. He's gonna get focused by this D.Va and dived. He's able to fall down very quickly there and able to get his tank supports there. Kiddo's gonna have to pop his Primal not to die there and here comes this Sound Barrier gonna come out. Just ult's being popped everywhere. Diva Bomb's not able to get anything and here comes another Diva Bomb gonna come out. It's not able to get anything as well. Just looking to re-mech a little bit there. Possibly. Yeah, a lot of ults flying around this map we saw. Um, the Diva Bomb come out as well, Winston. Uh, sound barrier come out, infra sights, a lot of things being used and just want to note, Cookie really taking advantage of this high ground, that's exactly what I was talking about when the Widow gets only more powerful as the stage goes along, more and more high ground for them to take advantage of. The steamroll is going right now and they are laying the cement and maybe possibly this domination right there, round one complete, let's see if GHL can match it. Yeah, that was a pretty blistering time coming in from Mach 3. GHL, not out of it quite yet, but this is kind of looking dire for them. They need to make a very good time just to stay competitive with their opponents right now. And overall, I think that the emphasis really kind of needs to be put on the cookie. It's a tough ask for the tanks as well as the DPS of Team GHL, Greg Hefley lovers. But... I think it's I, I I believe in this team. I believe that if they focus down Cookie, uh, it, it's going to make things miles easier for them. That being said, it's so much easier to talk this talk than to have to be able to actually perform under these conditions. Yeah, and this season alone, uh, Mach Three have I think it's over. I know confirmed over two players or two players at least. They were top five hundred this season, by the way, who are DPS mains. I'm just gonna throw that out there. So it is what what you see, what we say is it's it's easy, but when you do it, it is not at all. When you're facing <laughs> top 500, it is not easy. Yeah, and you know, I mean, that's that's kind of the uh, the grit that the Greg Hefley lovers uh, gonna have to be fighting up against here. With it's gonna be tough for them. <laughs> However, you know, they are not out of the fight yet as we talk. And looking at the defense, once again, going to be on those dive tanks, Storm Hornet and Shin, uh, the Devo winston combo, respectively. Uh, Cookie, of course, going to be on that Widow. Solid choice for this map, uh, assuming the Widow is able to maintain those positionings. Oh, yeah, and that Diva for Mach 3 is going to be pushed up. That Storm Hornet on that Diva finally able to have a safety kind of pick back up for him. But was doing pretty good on that Pharaoh last map, I'd say. Uh, Mark 3 is so actually going to get very aggressive here, going to back up a little bit afterwards, going to get that quick aggression and able to get a little bit out of him, not that much. Stormhorn is actually going to get melted right now, he's not going to go fully down and Shin's just trying to get Zimmer, not Zimmer, sorry. Able to get what, and Kiddo's actually going to go down and Knight's going to get demeked here. Great fights there coming out from Mach 3, able to get that targetization and I don't know if I said that right, but you know, hopefully. <laughs> we, we, we get what you mean, we get the spirit of it, but... Looking forward, Dragonfly's on this low ground. Now they just rotated up to the high. Might be the positioning they really need to prioritize. They're going to be seeing Cookie. Want to be very careful of those sightlines. Both snipers now knowing where they're standing. Uh, that's that's some uh, recipe for sniper duels. Oh yeah, Simmons able to find I'm Trash very quickly here. And that's just gonna get, you know, staggered a little bit there. And what's actually able to find Zimmerit? And Mach 3 is just gonna back off here a little bit. And this could Cookie! Able to get Dragon there. And there's another. You, like you said, they need to contain Cookie, and it is not working. He's got his wall hex on, or like you like to say for an NA production, you know, and for sight, but uh, we all we, we aren't all perfect. We can, we can't all be perfect <laughs> in fact, and that is very important to remember moving forward. Shin going to be popping that Primal Rage just as a bit of spacing. Nate going to be peeling back. <laughs> they know they can't win when the rest of their team is pinned into the spawn. MC Dragon going to be trying to get some damage out of the spawn. See if it works out for him. Yeah. And it's just the the ult economy for Mach 3 has been beautiful. They used that Infrasight last fight and were able to get so much out of it and win the fight because of it. And then he's a Primal this, or last fight, sorry. Uh, two fights ago, they used the Infra or Wall Hacks. And then they just used the Primal that fight and were able to win it just off that, really. 
So let's see what they're able to do here. Yeah, overall, a lot of ults available for the attacking Greg Hefley lovers. They have the bomb, primal, nano, the nano blade combo, and the sound barrier. So a lot of potential here. However, they're going to really need to work to use these ultimates properly. Uh, we'll see if they're able to get any uh, cash value out of them as is. Oh, yeah. And Dragon's going to go down very, <laughs> very low right now because of Cookie and Stormart's actually going to go the same really so is Zimmer the damage is gonna come out from both teams and Knight able to get Zimmer there finally a kill gonna be coming out and what's gonna pop his dragon blade and so it's gonna be a nano blade coming in and there's gonna be that sound barrier gonna be popped there it is. yeah and I really like the way these Lucios are playing both going to be popping that sound barrier as soon as the nano uh, comes out onto the ulting Genji Really providing some solid defense here um, and just allowing the teams to survive those massive damage ults. How about Cookie right now? He is on fire. Yeah, Cookie, uh, no slouch this time around. Uh, definitely sure that they uh, that they do not have a repeat of what happened last week. That being said, there are still 15 seconds and it's going to have to be Greg Heavily Lovers getting to cart within that time to even put it into contest. Oh yeah. And uh, the kill is just coming out right now. And this is definitely got to be feeling great for Mach 3 right now after last week's defeat. This time they are able to fight back. And they are winning it 3 nothing. Greg Hefley, good fight. But GG, Mach 3. <laughs> Indeed, Mach 3 going to be taking it 3 0, even ending with a little bit of a nano boost on Dakuki. And overall, man, that was some dominant play coming out from Mach 3. I, I think that that's pretty much kind of been the theme of the the night as it is. Uh, some solid plays also coming out of Zemret as uh, we see here on our screen. Uh, going to be getting the POTG with a nice nano blade. And really, I mean, we, we talked a lot about, about Cookie popping off, getting those headshots, but also Zemret being a pain for the rest of the back line of the uh, team Greg Hefley Lovers. Going to be uh, wrapping it up here, however, moving forward. Uh, that will be the end of Greg Hefley Lovers run here at the Overwatch Watchers Brawl for the month of April. However, we will be seeing Mach 3 carry on. And it's looking like they will be uh, trending towards the loser of the Raccoonians Team Horizon game. So if you're looking forward to Keeping up with Mach 3, be sure to catch that game as well. That will be on the 15th, I believe. If you're going to see their opponents in real time, I'm sure they'll be doing a little bit of studying themselves. But looking forward, overall, some some solid play, though. Also, looking, vote yeah, for your MVP. Yeah, definitely. We want to we want to hear what you guys have to think. It looked pretty uh pretty convincing there from Mach 3, but each player kind of adding an ingredient to that massive 3-0 sandwich as it is. But it looks like we're gonna be having uh, Art come into the caster room here in just a bit for a chat with Ares. Ares, I'm sure got some good questions to grill them on. But overall, man, I, I really loved the gameplay we saw tonight. Um, Greg Hefley lovers, uh, you know, they they took their lumps. It was, it was well fought, uh, but sometimes it just doesn't shake out the way you need it to. And that's what it was looking like was, was coming out here. Uh, Mach 3, again, uh, not to beat up on the Greg Hefley lovers. You have to remember, Mach 3, a very dominant team. Very high SR. I believe it's around 4,200. Um, and, you know, I think Greg Hefley lovers, you know, uh, kind of not shocking the way the results went the way they did. Yeah, definitely a SR difference there a little bit. But we do have Art in here now for this post-game interview. Hello, everyone. Congratulations on that big win. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. What was your guys's? I'm just gonna jump in here. How? Was, what was your guys' mindset coming into this game, knowing that you guys got three twoed in the last time against Team Horizon in a very very close matchup? So we kind of had a bad taste in our mouth about the uh, almost kind of like a reverse sweep that they had against us. So we did the research. We watched the VOD that uh, 
that you guys posted on your channel uh, with their uh, gameplay and kind of analyzed it. We kind of figured that we wanted to run our DPS comps because our just DPS are so strong. <laughs> oh yeah, you can definitely see that with Cookie there. And uh, what were you guys comms like during that game? Definitely having some really good plays in there. Mm, we kind of we kind of set our DPS up for like big plays, like with Nano Blades and uh, EMP bombs and things like that. Our comms were we're good, you know, we did have a, a ringer in today, so it was a little rough, you know, with the ult tracking and things, but, you know, overall, it was, it was good. Well, we all played really well today. I'm very proud of my team. Oh, yeah, very much, and you guys played very well, and, but well, you said you guys had a ringer. How did, uh, how, how did that really fare out? Uh, he was actually pretty good for, uh... Uh, so short notice, our uh, one of our off sports couldn't make it, but you know he was definitely flexible enough, and and he really helped the team today. So, uh, shout out to him for coming out and helping us. Oh yeah, and if you don't mind me asking, what was the play, or the map, or whatever you would like that would solidify when you knew that you had full control over this game in the series? I think after that uh, 441 attack round. Sir? Sorry, a 440 attack round on Gibraltar. Uh, we kind of knew, like, we, we can take a hold of this. This is, like, our game. Like, we got this. We can first hold. Especially after, um, I think, also the first map, when we had, like, that five-man um, uh, Diva Bomb, we kind of knew, like, I don't think they just were expecting it, so we knew their ult tracking was a bit off. So I think we, uh, we kind of knew going into that we had the uh, upper hand advantage. Oh, yeah, very much. And... We definitely are, are going to be seeing you more later on Losers Bracket right now. And mm. uh, good luck to you guys in the future. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh. And thank you, Art, once again for joining us here. But we are about to be wrapping up our proceedings here for the night, if I might be able to sound just a little bit fancy. But before we let you kind folks go, of course, we harped on you a little bit to vote for the MVP. We finally got our results back, and it looks like, to almost no surprise, Cookie going to be the MVP player's champion as it is for the time being. So, Cookie, congratulations on getting the MVP vote. Uh, Mach 3, once again, congratulations for the win. Thank you very much, Greg Hefty Lovers, for coming in here. Signing off for the night, I have been Sir Waltham. You can catch me on Twitter at Sir Waltham Gaming on Twitch at Sir Waltham. Yep. And I have been Aries, and you can catch me on Instagram, Aries underscore Thompson. And it's been a pleasure commentating for you guys today. Cannot wait to commentate with you guys yet again. Me and Sir Waltham are commentating every Tuesday from 7 to eh, 7 to about 9, and then whatever this game goes to. Sometimes, you know, a little bit longer than that, but. Yeah, it's been great to see you guys here, and cannot wait to catch you guys again on the Overwatch <laughs> Watchers Brawl number four here in this tournament in April. I have been play by play, Sir Waltham has been color, and of course, we have lovely refused on the EU production today. <laughs> I'm sure it was great quality, not the NA production, but you know, <laughs> we all have yeah. hopes. Absolutely. And with that being said, we want to thank you guys for tuning in. We hope you guys have a great night and stay safe out there.